Welcome to Random Convlox, where today we are talking about something a little bit more serious. I'm Zach. I'm John. And today we're going to talk about what every kid and even full grown adults have to deal with on a daily measure. It doesn't matter uh, what ethnicity you are, um, what race you are, what you do for a living. There's always going to be a critic, and there's always going to be an a-hole out there. Yeah, we're talking about bully- bullying in general, whether it's online, whether it's in real life. It, it doesn't leave you. Yeah. And... In a way, I was going to do this topic as a way of saying F you to, like, online critics or online bullies and the it's defense. A it's a lot more than that. Too. Well, yeah, yeah, but as a defense to people like Star Wars Theory or even for the defense of this channel once we get up there to invoke the bullying. Because if you think about it, it, it doesn't matter like what kind of person you are. You could be the nicest person in the world. Or you could be the richest person, or you could be the poorest person. You could be the meanest person. Like, if someone can cause you to have an effect of their teasing... Or their bullshit mannequins, or shenanigans is what I'm supposed to say, right? Yeah. Fuck that bullshit type of shit. Yeah, I think that's your limit on swearing. Okay, at least we get it out there. <laughs> <laughs> but in realism, um, bullies are at full size. And a kid that we both know is having problems with temper at the moment without the boy. He's got a temper problem as it is. Mm -hmm. He does have problems trying to keep it under check. And in a way, instead of me doing this for us as a channel or for other channels here on YouTube... We're going to do it for the... We're going to do it for the kid that we know, and we're going to do it for other kids that may watch this video. And yes, this video is not geared towards children, but we do understand that children do watch our videos. So with that being said, as long as the parent is okay with the child watching these videos... I'm 100% okay with it. I do cuss. My brother doesn't like to cuss. But I talk in a realistic manner, which doesn't frame from a way of... Sometimes they slip out with you. Yeah. To me, I know the context of the words I say, and I know that they have a slur meaning but I don't intend those words to be taken in that manner. So if you hear a cuss word from me, it's usually in the concept within the way that I, that it came out. So with that being said, we'll get down to the nitty gritty and like really explain what we're wanting to do with this topic in general And we're going to talk about our own experiences from our times in school. And if we still get bullies today. And like, but first off, we do want to mention like what this particular kid is going through and why bullies are in fact the way they are. And you can tell a lot with a bully on how the way or how the bully is bullying you. Does that make sense? Yeah. And 
with that, we can um, explain, like, what to do in that situation. And hopefully that this can help the kids that we're talking about. And like I said, we're not just talking about him. We're also talking about a bunch of people in general. And hopefully like this could be a learning possibility for other kids and pretty much anybody else that may want to help um, get rid of bullies in general. And with that being said, um, you want to explain it? Yeah. Um, yeah, this kid, he has um, darker colored skin. He's a fourth African-American and Native American. And there was another student that said a uh, racial slur. Um, and I'm not condoning what he said, but he called him a racist black monkey, which is completely out of line. The kid might have been joking. The kid might have not. That's not what we're talking about. It's, yeah. That's out of line to say. So he got angry. And I don't blame him for getting angry. But then he, the way he retaliated, he retaliated back and called the other kid a racist white monkey. But the teacher only heard what the... What, what our friend said. Yeah. And reprimanded him. Whereas, like, they should have both been reprimanded in that sense. Um, and, like I said, neither one was right. You shouldn't use racial slurs in the first place. But the bullying is what led up to that. And that's kind of what we're talking about here. Yeah. Is the fact that um, with, with online bullying, yeah. It happens, especially with YouTube, the more views you get, the louder you are. Yeah. And with real people, it's it's the volume at what you speak. Yeah. Now, our friend was a lot louder than his bully. Yeah. And that's the reason our friend ended up getting reprimanded in the bully did Now, that's what we're assuming. We weren't there for the conversation. But, well, yeah. obviously, if you break the scenario down, yeah. that's what it came out to be. Yeah. And you can take that from a situation just by hearing what happened. Yeah. You can detect that, oh, yeah, because if the bully was at the same volume, it would have caught the teacher's attention Yeah. instead of the person being bullied. Yeah. And that's the case with online too. There's been um there's been all kinds of cases with like kid like kids and like Facebook and being bullied whereas like it drove them up off the deep end. Yeah, and that's the point. Yeah. A bully wants to get a reaction out of you. Yeah. And um if they know you're loud, if they know that you can't hold your emotions back. Yeah. It makes it that much more fun for a bully to target you. Yeah. And you've had that experience because you have a temper problem yourself. Yeah. You have to deal with. I, I'm still dealing with an anger issue. Mm -hmm. I have an anger issue. I don't have a rock that I used to have to help anchor me. And those that know me know about that rock. Mm -hmm. And I don't have that anymore. So, like, I gotta work on that anger. Mm -hmm. I gotta work on it daily. It's, it's not a one and done type of process. It's not one day automatically you get the hint on how to handle a situation. It's a lifetime process. Mm -hmm. And even with me, even though I'm more laid back, there's times where I don't always handle situations well. Yeah, and there's going to be a point in your life where no matter how laid back you are, you are going to be an asshole to somebody. Mm -hmm. It could be that they're trying to do something for your own good. And it could be intent, and it's probably not intentional, but it can happen. But it's an accumulation of things over that process yeah. 
where you're like, okay, I finally had enough of this crap. And that, like, I'm not okay with people taking my shit. Yeah. And, matter of fact, that's one time you blew up on me. Mm -hmm. But I did that for a reason, not to be an asshole, but to, like, get you to go into the house and take a nap. Yeah, Which long, you wanted to go home instead. Long and story, you wouldn't have made yeah, it. Long story short, I worked steady night shifts. And um, there was something Zach needed at the time. And I probably shouldn't have drove up in the first place. But I was tired. And then I was going to try to drive home. And he took my keys off me. And I kind of flipped out. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, because he realized the situation, that, that I wasn't trying to be an a-hole. Yeah, you weren't trying to be a bull, you weren't trying to, like, you were yeah. trying to, yeah. And that it was for his own good, and, like, I seen how tired he was, and, like, I wasn't gonna let him drive 45 minutes to back to his house mm. just to get in a freaking car wreck. Yeah. And when he said it was something important, it was important. Yeah. Um, it was a doctor's appointment for our mom. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I didn't have a vehicle, so I had to rely on my brother. But I also wanted to make sure that my brother was okay when he was able to go home. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact he would have done the same thing for me. Yeah. And that wasn't really a bullying. That was just no. That but that was a sense where y you being um, level-minded, maybe ninety-nine percent of the time, and like just that one percent was enough to be like, okay, I, I don't want to deal with this. Yeah. Just because you were, and if you were. If you were in a situation where you were okay to go home, you wouldn't have flipped out like that. Yeah. And that's what pushed the envelope a little further in the sense that, okay, you're right, I'm wrong. Yeah. Type of thing. But when that happens in a situation that's actually for your own good and your own safety... When you get mad, you realize, oh, okay, well, I was a dick. Yeah, and the best thing to do when you do get upset about stuff is to, like, take a step back and... Look at the situation. Yeah. And with me, 99% of the time, I'm an a-hole. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care what people say about me. I couldn't give a rat's ass about anybody's opinion and a sense of, like, how it, like, how I feel towards it. Yeah. Like, you don't care because what people think about Because I'm you. me, and there's nothing going to change that. Yeah. But you do care about other people. But I do care about other people. Yeah. You treat me with disrespect, I'm going to treat you with disrespect. That's just the kind of person I am. But that's due to my anger. Yeah, and then something we actually avoid on this channel. We avoid bashing other channels and stuff because there's no point in it. It's like, you, yeah. it's like you're no better than the people you're bashing. And when I say that it's not just kids, that it's also adults being treated like this. Huh. Um, the, um, the YouTube channel um, Star Wars Theory. Guy's a great guy. Mm -hmm. He, he's, if you, if you've ever watched his channel, mm -hmm. then you know the kind of person he is. Mm -hmm. He's very laid back, but he's very forward about his opinion. He, even though, like, his opinion isn't something that a hundred people agree with. So what? That's his opinion. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and that's the thing. Like that's the all because he's got uh, X many views that allows him to speak louder to more people. Doesn't make him a target for online bullying. And that's and that's the thing, though. That's like one of the beauties of life. We all we're all different. We're all gonna have different opinions on the same topic. Exactly. Like you give ten people, or like a hundred people, um, you get them all to sit down in a room and read a story. They're all gonna take something different from that story. Yeah. If every person took a story at face value. Then there would be no um, personalized opinion. Mm -hmm. And that it would basically be patriot. Um, um, Pledgeria? It wouldn't really be plagiarism, but. Well, technically it would, because it would be something one person said, and then everybody follows suit. Yeah. And what is that in a legal sense? Yeah. It's copying someone else's work one for one, but yeah, yeah. and that's the thing. You you gotta you have to be able to think for yourself, form your own opinion on something, but you shouldn't bash somebody for having an opinion different than you. There's things that you and me differ on. There's things that me, us, and Matt differ on, but we don't argue about it. In that video, where he's yeah. getting hazed, um, it's just because the bully and this circumstance the online bully and I'm not going to reference it because it's not it's not even worth mentioning worth mentioning because we're not exposing the bullies yeah. because they're not worth our breath yeah. we're trying to speak for those that are getting bullied yeah and it's all because the people that wanted to write an article about him didn't have a full a full picture a full picture of the information they only took bits and pieces of a situation mm-hmm. and added their own narrative to it mm-hmm. and why don't we go ahead and talk mm-hmm. about what that was about to an extent mm-hmm. I'm still not going to mention the company's name but I will mention about the topic. Mm-hmm. Um, girls being a main character in Star Wars. Yeah. And the fact that he scoffs when a guest that he talked to, was talking to answered a question, do you think girls should be a lead in Star Wars. And the lady didn't know that much about Star Wars. They didn't know that other women were okay with Star Wars and actually liked it. But from her point of view, Star Wars was a boy's show. And let's get something straight. Like, in our opinion, like, especially in my opinion, it's like shows, we both believe that shows really aren't gendered. If you like a show you're more than welcome to watch it. And a female Star Wars lead isn't a bad thing. We just disagree with how it was written. There's plenty yeah. of female lead characters in many shows. Yeah. Um, Law and Order SVU has one of the best female leads. A lot of uh, a lot of TV shows and video games have really good female characters. Uh, Lorecroft, Samus, um, the first Last of Us. We don't. We're not going to talk about the second. <laughs> <laughs> um, the um. But there's a difference between being a good female yeah. lead and being a Mary Sue. Yeah. And then having all that focus on the female lead to make that female lead untouchable. Yeah. And it's a stance to help your own agenda. And, and the reverse is true with guys. It's one of the reasons why, for a while, Superman wasn't so pop. What lost popularity. He was getting too powerful for his own good. Nobody could touch but him. That's right the away. way he was written. That's the way he was written, but they actually had to find ways to weaken him because... Yeah, he, he that's was too, where Kryptonite came yeah, from. He was too powerful. It's like... <laughs> it's like, what the heck? Yeah. You want a Kryptonite. Yeah. You want a weakness. 
You don't want someone starting out perfect. Yeah. Because where's the journey? Yeah, and honestly, that's um, it's one of the best and worst things about the Spider-Man comics. Like, no matter what, bad things will happen to Spider-Man. Yeah, <laughs> whether they want them to or not. Like, he gets married, he his wife passes, or like he yeah. has a sixth sense, but yet he also gets taken out like nine times out of ten. Bad stuff keeps happening to Spider-Man. Yeah, and that's the thing about a story. It's like there has to be constant drama constant things when you're writing a story and one reason why i'm actually speaking about creativity in a sense i'm writing my own story yeah um it's going to be part of a youtube channel with our production but i'm writing a story and i'm writing a story of an overpowered kid that's that doesn't understand that he's overpowered. Mm. But, in a sense, he still loses. Yeah. And every time he loses, it's a new learning experience. Yeah. And that's the way a lead should be written. Yeah. Is... Like, they can win, they can lose, but you have to have, like, story there, drama, things that lead up to it. Yeah, you want... If you want a perfect character... Mm. Like, you want a character that is the end-all, be-all. Then, write a journey to that. Yeah. If you want a god-ass character, then show the journey of him being a god. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, that character has no experience whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's the experience within that journey that makes that character who it is. Yeah, and going back around to our main topic, this is the reason why you shouldn't let bullies get to. It's like, when they're putting you down, you, you gotta think, it's like, I need to be the better person, I need to use this to build myself up and like not give them the benefit of retaliation. Well, it's also the fact that with you yeah. being able to hold your temper a lot better than I can, being able to take a step back, you can look at the situation and be like, okay, what is this person wanting to get from me? Yeah. What kind of reaction is this person trying to give me? Yep. And I've learned that rolling with the punches, you actually make more friends that way and you actually get along with people a lot better because <clears throat> sometimes they're just, sometimes even with kids, they're not like, they're just teasing, but there's a line between teasing and harassing and bullying. Yeah. And that's something I had to learn growing up. Well, to me, it's very similar, but... Yeah. It, it's a very fine line, and you have to know, like, when to step back. But once, like, when she started looking at the mm -hmm. bullies, um, the way that the bully is bullying you, mm -hmm. if it's physical, usually it's because something physical outside of school is happening, mm -hmm. That makes them feel weak. Yeah. So they want the other person to feel weak. Yeah. If you're the loudest person around, you're going to be part of the topic. You're going to be part, like, you're going to be the target. Mm -hmm. Because they know if they're quieter than you, you're going to get the heat. Yeah. You're going to get the backlash. Mm -hmm. Not them. If it's them calling you a name... Listen to how soft they're talking. Yeah. Because if it's just for you to hear, then they're trying to get your goat. They're trying to get your temper. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get you to raise your voice, to get you into trouble. Yeah. And with people that have temper problems like me, and like the kids that we discussed in the beginning of the video, it's fucking easy. Yeah, it's, and there's like, and there's no point in poking to like quote a saying poking a bear. It's like, it's like if someone has a temper problem in general, and you know they're gonna flip out, why instigate? But that's the whole point. Yeah. Any situation in. Well, in that situation, the bully's like, okay, well, I know this. 
yeah. from doing this. Yeah. I can get this person into trouble anytime I want because yeah. I know their reaction. Yeah, but if they already have that temper problem, what's going to be the day they finally snap if you keep p- p- pestering them? Yeah, like a bully's going to take that thought and be like, okay, well, I'm going to make him have such a horrible time, him or her, yeah. have such a horrible time in school yeah. that... Let's say they get in trouble now, they'll hold. Yeah. And it'll be okay because I can still keep getting their goat. Yeah. And then that that anger is going to fester yeah. to their home life. Yeah. And then they're going to get in trouble with their parents. Yeah. And then it's going to get worse and it's going to get worse and it's yeah. going to get worse. Yeah. And I can take that credit. Yeah. It's actually and, happened with you. There was a case where you had you still have anger issues, but there's a case where somebody said something to you and they weren't like being serious at the time, but you took it seriously. You literally blacked out and you woke up two weeks later in jail because we're that yes, angry. Yes, I have a temper problem. Yeah. I went to jail for it. Yeah, you're, it's known as, if you want to say what it is. it's Yeah, it's intermittent explosive disorder or IED for short. Yeah. And the problem is... Um, I've mentioned it in several other videos. I have no problem mentioning my problem. But it works on a trigger system. Yeah. And people that have this disorder may not even know what their triggers are. But once you know the trigger, there it doesn't matter if you're the nicest person with this type of disorder. You may not even know you have it. But a trigger gets hit, there is no stopping you. You black out, you're a menace to society, and you're a danger to the people you love. And that's a sense where you take a step back when you wake up from that darkness and like you need to take a step back and look at yourself, look at the people around you and be like, was that worth it? Yeah. Because with me, it's not just the the trigger. It's I'm somewhat conscious within like 15 minutes before blacking out yeah. of that rage. I feel that rage. I know where that rage stems. I, at yeah. some point, and... People can say whatever they want about this, but I'm going to be real for a minute here. And I got to admit, I loved it. I loved the feeling of the strength that it gave me. I loved the and you, agility that it gave me. And right now you don't, but like in that moment, it felt good That's to be what angry. I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. At the moment, when that trigger is hit. Yeah. There's almost like a high from it. Yeah. And it's like, I know I shouldn't be this way. Yeah. I know I shouldn't like this feeling. Mm. But I also know from experience how that feeling feels. Yeah. And like what it does to the body Mm. at the moment because it's a... um, it's a rush of adrenaline, and it's like an adrenaline high. And adrenaline can feel good. It's why you have adrenaline junkies that like go and do crazy stuff. Yes, but this was like, okay, well, my normal strength at 12, and I was like 47 pounds, I was able to pick up someone that was close to 200 pounds. Normal strength. Um, I'm going to call it IED mode, where I go berserk. You can probably pick it's up double that. Yeah, I've literally picked up the front of a car at the age of twelve, yeah. and it scared people. Yeah, but to me, I liked that strength. I would rip doors off hinges, thinking that it made me. Feel strong. But you realize, like, hey, you, but you, over the years, you realize, like, hey, anger is not a. When I went to jail, 
and realized like the damage that my anger caused. No. It was a wake up call. Yeah. And I don't want any other kid that may have a similar problem as I do mm. or any other like emotional health um problem getting to that point where they either hurt the people that they love yeah. physically mm-hmm. or they hurt the people that they love emotionally. Yep. And then nowadays, when you start to feel like that, you either call me and vent yes. or you go for a walk until you calm down, which you've done both before. Yeah. And um, in a situation where I feel like I can't do either, I just try to avoid the conflict. Yeah. I try to imagine myself not even being there. Um, a s- sort of state of um, meditation where like, you block out your surroundings. You disassociate yourself from the situation. Yes. And that's something that I'm actually fairly good at doing when I get flustered with somebody. I can walk away and like kind of distance myself. Um Ah, there's a psychiatric word for it, and I'll probably paste it somewhere in the comments if I don't get exactly right with this. I think it's a association. Um, um, it's forced associate detention. Um, and it's where you can relocate yourself in your mind Mm -hmm. and choose who's there and who's not. And I'm not going to lie, sometimes I'm too good at that, and when people are yelling at me, even when it's for good reason, my brain's like, ah, la, 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 la. Yeah. You've been there while I'm doing it? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Uh, I'm nodding, but nobody's home. (laughs) (laughs) But... It's no, not it's like, yeah. us saying that it's okay to be this way. No. You're saying I'm that you have a problem. I'm from experience that I do have an anger problem. Um, and it's, I, an, uh, it's addictive, and that's what you're saying. Like, you need to... Yeah. yeah. And, and I know that people might say that this is a hoax, that if I had a temper problem, I wouldn't be doing something that may cause a said temper problem. But my trigger isn't anything that has to do with the internet. Mm-hmm. And nowadays, I handle bullies a whole different way. Mm-hmm. I start looking at them in a psychological sense. Mm-hmm. And it's because of the way that I got the help. And since I I got more help after getting out of jail than I did before getting into jail is because I realized the difference between liking the way that it made me feel in the sense of like the increased strength, the increased agility, how it made my eyesight better, how it made my hearing improve. Yeah, because adrenaline does all that. Yeah, you know. and for people that don't understand, adrenaline does a lot. It's very addicting. It runs your body up past hundred percent. Yes, but you crash hard once your adrenaline kicks to that max. Yeah. But then you also have to take a step back and look at the people that are around you. What if I did that to my mom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if that door that I kicked off of a jail cell was my mom? What if that was my brother? What if that was someone that I hold dear? Mm -hmm. What if that was my stepdad? Mm-hmm. I'm not hurting anybody but them. Yeah. It doesn't matter how I'm hurting the person that triggered me. Mm-hmm. It's the people around me that I'm affecting the most. Yeah. 
that person that triggered me doesn't give a rat's ass about me. Mm-hmm. That person that's a bully doesn't give two f- flying flips about what what happened to me or what would happen to my family. Because it's not in their best interest. What's in their best interest is to make them feel better and make you feel worse. Mm -hmm. And that's when you have to put a stop to it and be like, okay, enough's enough. Mm -hmm. I know how this makes me feel, Mm -hmm. but these people in my life make me feel better. Yeah. And you should focus on the people that actually are a good influence on your life and like thinking about how they would react and I'm hoping that the person that we're talking about really understands that like we're not trying to shame him no we're wanting to explain our points of view and and I'm sorry Star Wars Theory for also bringing you in on this Yeah, and but I'm trying to make a point saying okay this is what's happening it doesn't matter if you're a kid or an adult this is still going to be a hindrance for the rest yeah. of your life and you just need to yeah. learn how to deal yeah. with it and honestly like I'm speaking from experience myself I was bullied as a child I was um one thing I was hyperactive and I talked a lot and there was a guy in our town that had a similar name as me that was slow and he was called Johnny Yak Yak and the kids in school started calling me that I hated it (laughs) literally like it drove me up the wall that that was your point no I'm not joking like that brought me to tears as a little kid. I can understand that, but I don't see how... Like, and, I, I was different. bullied. It's different, but like certain things trigger different people. That's something that triggered me as a younger kid. Like Now, it's nothing. I can joke about it all I want. But. Yeah. Well, with me, none of my teachers got my name right. Yeah. So, if they even got the first letter of my name right... I was okay. <laughs> but, like... Yeah, your, your name's Zachariah McConaugh. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Zachariah, Zacchaeus, um... Zif- Zikreed. Close enough. <laughs> Not kidding. <laughs> um... <coughs> like... We, we can joke about it now, but back then it's like... Like, join Yak Yak... <laughs> At least they say John. <laughs> With me, it was Josh? Sean? Why would you get Josh? <laughs> I don't know. Jack? Oh, that's, that sounds close. Yeah, go ahead. You sat. <laughs> Brian? <laughs> Michael? <laughs> but it's like... They always spelled your name wrong, too. Even if they got my name right, they spelled it wrong. And that's actually common because your name isn't spelled the traditional way. Yeah. The closest anybody's ever came to say my name wrong but still getting part of it right is actually calling me Corey. Mm -hmm. And that goes to the second part of my first name. Mm -hmm. My real name is Zach Corey. But you put it together. And it's not like C O R Y, it's K O R Y. Yeah. And if they called me Corey or Zach, I'm like, okay, you know my name. <laughs> or um, for your whole entire life, your freaking um, speech therapist says that you're saying your name wrong. When. The um, school that you're going to ends up spelling your name wrong, but you spell it in the sense of like this is how I spell my name. This is the way it's supposed to be spelled. Yeah. And this is the way that it's supposed to be said. Yeah. And then, 
like the teacher kids goes, oh, I get it. So you're not like a Zachary, you're a Zach Corey. Yeah. And it all comes from actually my dad making a compromise and going with a name that my mom wanted, but yet a name that um, my aunt wanted and selling for a weird version of Zachary as Zach Corey. But being called Corey or Zach was ever the closest that someone's gone to saying my name. But um, there's a running gag and a friend of mine actually named his kid this just one because of me doing backyard wrestling with him for a long time and me going by this name but and also the name belonging to one of my favorite wrestlers and um out of frustration um my kindergarten teacher would call me the name because she had the hardest time saying my real name. And she ended up calling me Sean. So it's been a running gag that anytime someone's upset with me, the closest that they ever get to saying my name in frustration, the first word that pops out of their mouth is Sean. Where do you get Sean from Zach Corey? It's the same spelling. Oh, totally. <laughs> so, my closest friend mm -hmm. that I basically grew up together with, that's like, and no offense to JJ, but mm -hmm. I've said this many times, that he's almost like a real brother to me in the sense of how long we grew up together. Yeah. But he's not my biological brother. He's like... That best friend that you know. There's somebody you've known your whole life. Yeah, that you know inside and out, and he knows you inside and out. Someone that you don't feel like you have to prove something to. Like, family. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm bringing up like a bunch of names that I was called is because. To me, when a bully would call me another name, it never really bothered me. In the sense that, like how Johnny Yak Yak bothered you. Yeah. To me, I would have seen that as a joke. And nowadays, that's I do. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But if someone went and like slapped me in the face, even if it was lightly... It would cause me to flip the freak out. And honestly, that did, that never bothered me. I could be punched in the face and laugh it off. Just like, I didn't get that I, easy. I don't do good being smacked in the face. Uh, fuck. No, I wouldn't actually. <laughs> but um, in all seriousness, like I, the first person to ever do that hmm. regret his decision. Hmm. Me, I I don't get even that with that. I don't get mad easily. Like, um, the situation when I work at, I deal with individuals that sometimes can have behaviors and, like, you get hit and stuff, and I, it's good that I am calm because there's people that in those situations would retaliate and flip out, you know what I mean? Yeah, and knowing me, I probably would. Yeah. And I also know that people are going to be like, well, you keep saying that you've done back at wrestling how do you not deal with someone that slapped you in the face like how and that you... in that case it's fine because you're it's it, you know, I know going... it's coming yeah but you just turn me around just to slap me in the face for no apparent reason there's nothing leading up to it yeah i'm gonna flip the fuck out on you mm. like that's not okay in my book 
Yeah, and there's but no- that's not also the way to handle that situation either. That's just a trigger response. Yeah, and basically what we're saying is like there's no reason for bashing somebody, like, um, especially if you don't know the full story of something. It's like there's no reason for bullying. There's no reason for bashing. All you're doing is making that person feel worse to make you feel a little better, and you're no better if you're bull- the one like harassing you're no better than the person you're harassing you're probably worse yeah and nine times out of ten it's because the person that's bullying or doing the bullying has something going on in their life that causes how they feel maybe they're depressed and don't know how to handle the situation maybe they're abused and want to take that pain out on someone weaker than them Mm -hmm. I've been in situations where I've seen all different types of bullies. When a bully is quiet and they know that you're rash to reaction and that you can be louder than them, they'll do it to make your life a living heck. But... If they're to the point where they're physically, like, putting their hands on you, you have to do something to, you know, be like, hey, stop. Enough's enough. Yeah. Do what's necessary. Like, if they're giving you a shove, be like, when a bully is shoving you, just tell them playing out as loud as you can. And as stern as you can, stop putting your hands on me. Mm-hmm. Because nine times out of ten, that'll get someone's attention. Mm-hmm. And then when you say it loud enough, and they're like, hey, okay, well, he hasn't done anything yet. Let's see what's going on here. Mm-hmm. And just approach the situation with, like, hey, this person is putting their hands on me. I don't like it. Make them stop. If you don't do something, I'm going to my parents. And I'm going to do the right thing. Yeah. I'm tired of getting in trouble all the time. Yeah. So, that's a, a proper way to handle it. Yeah. And sometimes you need to tell the um, bully that, you know, the crap's got to stop. Mm-hmm. Or in a situation where someone's calling you a name. You know, they're doing it quiet. The teacher's not going to hear them. Mm-hmm. But if you have an outburst, then, you know, you're going to be the one that's being targeted because the teacher hears you. Instead of just blowing up then and there. Just say loudly enough so the teacher can hear, please stop bothering me. Yes. But not in a sense where you're doing the same thing back to the bully. Or if you don't, if you feel like you're going to get in trouble by doing that, just calmly walk up to the teacher and be like, hey, I'm sick and tired of always getting treated like a bad kid. I am tired of being picked on. I am tired of always being the brunt of getting into trouble. Either do something with the person that's harassing me that you don't freaking hear. And please don't use freaking. And don't be rude about it. Just be like, hey, this person said this and it's really getting to me. And I want you to handle it so I don't get in trouble. Don't you get in trouble for being a bully, for defending yourself. Yeah, and if you are being harassed, don't be afraid to go to a teacher or if the teacher doesn't listen, go higher up. Go to your parents. Go to your parents. Because nine times out of ten, they know what to do. Mm-hmm. Trust them. Yeah. Don't make them your enemy. Mm-hmm. And I want to put this plain as day. Don't make your parents your enemy. Because nine times out of ten, they are wanting to help you. Not nine times out of ten. Even ten times out of ten. A hundred percent. If your parents are loving and caring. Yes. And you know your parents are there for you. 
Yeah, exactly. They will. Your parents are there for you, and they will help you. Your even if you're not, then those aren't the right parents for you. Yeah. Like there are proper ways to handle the situation. Yeah. And sometimes you need. And uh, I'm going to say this again. The person that we're talking about really needs to focus and listen at this point. Talk to your parents. Yeah. Tell them what's on your mind. Do not go and just yell. And bottle it up. And cry and whine and make a big, like, make it seem bigger than what it is or... Like make a not the sense of like saying don't make it a big deal because it is a big deal, mm. but talk to them, yeah, like they talk to you. Talk to them, calm. Mm. Talk to them, being like, hey, you know, I'm a little frustrated. This is what happened at school. Mm. Can we talk so I can get this out? Yeah, and th- you're speaking from experience too, because you have to talk to. You literally, you've called me in the middle of the night because there was something that was making you want to flip out. Yeah, and you weren't yelling; you were calm, but you were flustered. Yeah, and, and in the situation, I also have to kind of mm-hmm. put the parents under a knife too, a little bit, mm-hmm. under the microscope, and kind of dissect that situation. With, as a parent, and not saying I am, but from, from experience, and I've been around kids, and I've, I've been someone that a child has trusted enough to go to with certain circumstances like this. Mm-hmm. Parents, you know your children. Yep. You know your children better than anybody else, better than the school, better than the principal, Mm -hmm. better than the authorities, Mm -hmm. at least if you're a good parent. Yeah. That's the way you need to be. And so you know for 100% Mm -hmm. that you can tell when one of your kids are having a bad day. Yeah. What you need to do yeah. is get them to sit down, mm-hmm. look you in the eyes, and just talk calmly. Mm-hmm. And say, Bud, mm-hmm. I can tell that you're having a bad day. Mm-hmm. You may not want to talk right now. But when you're ready, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to listen to you. But you have to talk to me with the same amount of respect that I'm showing you. When you're ready to talk, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And that's all you need to do. Mm -hmm. That is literally all you need to do as a parent. It's not all just the kid. Yeah, and if the kid is still yelling and stuff, that's another story. But sometimes, sometimes talking calmly is the usually talking calmly is one of the best ways to defuse the situation. Yeah, because once you lower your voice and mm-hmm. you realize, oh, this tongue got me into trouble, mm-hmm. you start realizing, yeah. you start lowering your voice. Yeah. Is that sounding like a complete maniac like this and always passionate and crashing and all that bull crap? I'm saying sound most of the time though. Well, yeah, <laughs> because I'm psycho. <laughs> what? But you start sounding like this, and then people realize that you're serious. Yeah. And they're willing to listen to you a lot more like this. Yeah. Then all over the place with your anger and your volume and your speech. Yeah. Because this is a lot more understandable. Yeah. And you can get a lot more out Mm -hmm. slowly than you can yelling, Mm -hmm. cursing, 
We're throwing a fit. Yep. And I think that's actually a good place to end this because... Um, I don't know what else to say about this topic, <laughs> but in all seriousness, like, um, if this has helped you guys out at all, um, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, um, not to really promote ourselves in this cause this is meant to be a serious topic to help people. Yeah. But, and for the people that I've mentioned, um, go check out Star Wars Theory and see the crap that he's having to deal with yeah, and see how he handles the situations that he has to deal yeah. with. Um, check out MatPat with Game Theory. Um, check out Sean McLaughlin from Jacksepticeye. Because um, a lot of the big YouTubers, they get bashed all the yeah. time. Yeah, and with internet bullying being just that they look for the people that have the biggest numbers mm -hmm. because that's what speaks the loudest yeah and if they know that you're the loudest person you're usually a target yeah and with that being said I'm Zach I'm John and usually we win this with me telling JJ to do some sort of Vegeta impression we're, we're going to keep it serious for the end here. We hope you guys all have a nice day, and thanks for watching. And remember, that's not just a video. It's a topic. A topic for a serious situation. Have a nice day.